How is Hong Kong right now? How does the real city look? Let's get out a little bit of the main areas, the fancy areas, Hong Kong Island. This has been the first video I've shot in this city. And it was nice. Right now also at the Walk of Stars, right by the water. So to my left, you're seeing the skyline of Hong Kong Island. To my right, you're seeing the crazy buildings of Kowloon. Let's head into, yeah, inside of Hong Kong, a little bit deeper. Actually, I've been once here in 2019 and it always said Hong Kong everywhere. Now I'm seeing the signs and it says Hong Kong, comma, China, everywhere, which is quite interesting to me. So let's see how much is Hong Kong really China? I've been once to Shenzhen for a couple of days and uh, generally, I have to say, in Asia, one of the most modern, most busy cities. But at the same time, the contrast is huge between a business district to a more local area. And I would say that's what I want to do today. So here right by the water is an interesting area full of museums. What is this? Hong Kong Museum of Art. Then you're having like huge malls. This is uh, I think also some kind of art gallery. National Museum in the back. So this is kind of that neighborhood. And uh, I would say let's get some transportation. Maybe a bus, maybe an MRT, maybe a taxi and make our way inside. So the thing actually about Kowloon is from what I understand is this one road that we're going to be looking at right now. You can walk through it all the way to Mong Kok, to very local areas. And I would say with every block, the city starts to get a bit less modern, a bit more old school. So let's observe that a little bit. So this is the front row. Looks absolutely insane. Super fancy. What is this? Like a Sheraton. Super sick hotels in the back. I live kind of like down the road, 20 minutes walk. Still very great location. But yeah, especially the buses driving around here, the taxis. Yeah, it's very interesting. There is a mosque in the back. And also in this neighborhood, the shops really start to change. There's like little shops on the side of the road everywhere. But I would say let's drive in here and go I don't know, four or five stations up, see what's going on there. So inside the subway, you can pay it actually through Apple Pay, which is quite nice. We have made it to quite a different area. Mong Kok. Wide roads, many little shops on the sides. We're also big ones, honestly, so here you really see this is kind of like a more local neighborhood. Still, I think a lot of people go out just to, I don't know, I would say it's a mix of shops for people to visit. But at the same time, you also see most of the people probably live here because you have like 15, 20 story buildings left and right, very small apartments. So there's a huge generally like housing shortage in Hong Kong, obviously, the space is very limited. So from what I heard is like the most amount of skyscrapers in the world, the concentration and the prices for like very, very, not the most nice looking, honestly, buildings seem to be very high. But basically what I'm talking about is like the sky rises here actually remind me a little bit of like Eastern European buildings, like little basically boxes and uh, on the bottom, everything quite colorful, very Asia style, running into some kind of a market. It looks crazy. It looks never ending actually in some way. Let's go in, check it out. So, they're having like some souvenirs. Selling an old, some type of Fast and the Furious cars, magnets, and I would say, Kind of interesting is that you cannot really tell when the market ends. It just keeps going behind these two skyscrapers and it's still fairly early. Like what is it? 1 p.m. approaching right now. So a lot of shops are not even set up yet. I think generally like so many markets in Asia, it's kind of like an evening thing. In the evenings food is gonna pop up in every corner. Probably gonna go out again. So just went out of the hotel in the morning. Gonna get back later. I'm gonna show you around there a little bit and then probably in the evening gonna go towards some evening market i think there's supposed to be another few more closer in the middle so i'm kind of want to give you the contrast today of like mong kok 
very local in many ways. We've got all these sky rises down there, super fancy, and in the middle. We'll see, we'll find out. So yeah, in many ways, most of the shops are just setting up, just getting ready. Little Chinese cat. Macadam? Like what? Nuts? Chinese cat. Walking by a huge church, kind of like a skyscraper church. Right in the middle of Mong Kok. We have that. So here in the little hallway, that is the big contrast of Hong Kong. Excuse me. That's what I call a solid crowd. So guys, we'll jump back into Hong Kong in a second. If you have been watching the channel, you probably have heard about level eight here before. Been with these suitcases for already over a year on the road. The aluminum carry-on is my favorite one, like super sleek, elegant, honestly just a sexy piece of luggage you're carrying there with you. As of right now, I'm on the road with the carry-on Pro. You have this nice little pocket for the laptop. Super convenient, it's also fairly light. And I have to tell you, the quality, if you compare it to other, let's say, upscale luxury suitcases, is amazing at a much more affordable price. And as of right now, if you need a carry-on, if you need to check luggage, they also have these like check luggages with the wide grip. Absolutely love them. And 15% uh, off. Usually they do maybe 10% if you sign up to the newsletter with my code. Danny15, you can get 15% off if you're planning a trip, if you maybe want to buy a gift for somebody. And as you have seen, they roll super smoothly. I've never had a luggage like that that you can almost like let it roll by itself. And um, if you want to see what type of different pieces they have, check out their Instagram page. There they're also running exclusive discounts. Sometimes even they give away one for free every once in a while. And um, yeah, the link will be first things in the description. Click, check it out. Watch the video first, I guess, or it's fine. You can come back. Check out the luggage. Come back. Okay, so let me show you. Back at no, back at the harbor, very close to where we started the video, like a 15-minute walk, is the icon hotel so in the last video i showed you a hotel on the other side of the water you can check out the previous video but this one i have to say is very very unique in the sense of as far as i understand it's not part of a big chain it's a hong kong hotel very unique doesn't remind me really of anything walking in this is how the hallways look and i would say let me take you in give you a quick tour. Yes, this is crazy. So guys, let me show you this place. So what a contrast. First of all, behind me, you could see one of the most amazing views of Hong Kong. I've recorded a little bit at night and I have to tell you, no matter the weather conditions at night, the whole skyline just glows like crazy. It's incredible. And from here also, you see the light show. Right now a little bit gloomy, but still let me give you a bit of a room tour. So the first night we spent at the basic room, I'll show you that as well. I think I've got a shot there. Very nice, still get an amazing view. But this, this is their suite and I have to tell you, wow. So first of all, we are standing here in the bedroom, nice and cozy bed, TV right next to it here. I would call this the observatorium. They have this little chair here and definitely quite invites you. So this over there is where we long, uh, walked along in the beginning of the video. So uh, I think I mentioned before, but basically it's the Icon Hotel and online I saw it's designed by local Hong Kong designers and uh, as i said before doesn't remind me really of anything else as you know on the channel i like to cover different hotel experiences and here 
the bathtub. First of all, you see this whole skyline here through the window, you see the main Hong Kong Island, and then you have a nice bedroom, toilet here a little bit for the ladies. Amazing. <laughs> Dyson, over time I have learned that this is a very nice thing to have. Not that I would know of. And uh, the heart, really, when I saw the pictures of this, I thought this is like hotel, just lobby, maybe the lounge, when I saw the photo of just that. So pretty much you have kind of like your private lounge, super cool sitting area. You are not seeing double, mini bar is free. Free, the mini bar is free. So yesterday, couldn't help myself, get all of the M&Ms. Got nice drinks, something I've never seen at a hotel. They have coconut water in the mini bar, which is free. <laughs> Lots of Diet Cokes can go crazy. So I'm looking at, probably looking at half of Hong Kong right now. So the ninth floor, there's the gym. Gonna hit it up in a second. Just take a look, I'll just take a look, thank you. Guys, take a look. Thank you. So, they have an outdoor pool. Actually, a really nice size. Yesterday at night, I'm stopping by and I'm like, it's heated. 28 degrees this, that's pretty warm. Can hop in later. And I would say on a sunny day, you're gonna get the sickest view out here. But even on the most cloudiest of days, you're still seeing Hong Kong Island skyline and uh, yeah also good amount of Kowloon over there and I love it I love it when a hotel knows where to put their gym sometimes they have such an epic location you know you can do it on the top floor on the rooftop floor use the space somewhere you see there's empty space they put it in the ground floor somewhere facing like I don't know some random place here behind the glass right in front of the pool looking at all of Hong Kong is the gym gonna hit it right after and then head to dinner but yeah seriously did not get lucky with the weather this time around but i think that impresses me if you're in a city it rains every once in a while it's super hazy but still you get to you get the vibe you get to see so much and so here we are wrapping up right now a workout when traveling doing full body mostly and i have to say Many good hotel gyms, but this one right here, you've got all the equipment you need pretty much, even a full-on squat rack. Um, but the best part is kind of like, you have all the daylight from outside, have a nice view. Yeah. So, came to the top floor of the Icon here for afternoon tea in the lounge. One of my favorite things about hotels is if you get a bit hungry, you come up, here we have some uh, Chinese Cantonese Xiao Mao, generally dim sum. It's Cantonese food. I thought it is. Um, now I'm certain. One of my favorite foods, honestly. And uh, yeah, 29th floor, so you get a, a really nice view overall. Got a great seat in the corner. So just gonna be chilling here for a while, having a coffee. And also I think later gonna come down to have dinner here. Not sure if I'm gonna shoot it, if I do. Um, the view, I think especially when it gets darker, it's crazy good from here. kind of food, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this is your section of to the video. Yeah. Tell us how tender and how farty it is. Yeah. What do you to activate these pleasure. Ah, yeah, my palate, plant, my palate is fully open. Yeah. For all kind of fla flavors. Now you're like in Charlie's Angels. My palate is open. Only for me. Yeah, yeah, Alex, you decide to cut it out or keep it in. It's up to you. You're my PR team. <laughs> and how is it? Mm. I don't know what is it. What is it? 
good. And I'm so hungry, so I don't care. Honestly, the bread with butter would be nice, but it's good. So for dinner we are at the Above and Beyond restaurant, so it's kind of like on the other side of the lounge. And I have to tell you, the view is like even better than expected, cleared up a little bit, absolutely beautiful. Um, food is supposed to be Chinese, so Beijing, duck, a couple of little, little starters, super nice, amazing view. See you tomorrow. Or at two other. We'll see. Give us a lesson on the duck. Freaking duck. So, you take one beautiful bunny cake like this. Then, some veggies, put some veggies like this. Alandaya fireball veggies and cucumbers. Okay. And some walnuts here. What about the walnuts? They chill? Yeah, okay. for now. Then you take a piece of that, or if you are carnivorous maximus, you can take also two. Pieces of duck. Yeah, take it all. I don't even eat it. Like this. And after that, a little bit of sauce. Special sauce. Just a little bit. A yeah. little bit of sauce. Yeah, a little bit of sauce. Like this. Like this. Yeah. And. What do we do now? We should roll it like a roll. Oh, like no. this. I hope you're doing it right. Yeah. If not, we'll let us know <laughs> in the comments. So, a Chinese duck burrito. Mm. How is it? Right. Snishmi. So, now after I've received all the instructions, let's see. Wow. We're heading out right now to go to the peak of Hong Kong. There is a tram going. Sounds easy, sounds nice. I'll walk by it, I'll consider it. But also I saw you can just walk there with your own two feet. The weather is beautiful, the best it has been so far in Hong Kong. So let me take you on a bit of a uh, walk. Walking through the park, so much greenery actually in Hong Kong. I mean, it's an island, Hong Kong Island, what most people don't realize, but I don't still fully realize, hopefully I'll get the view from up there, is that there's beaches, there's a coast. And uh, from here, this looks like a gigantic city, obviously. This over there, I think, is the Bank of China. So many iconic buildings walking through here. I'm stoked. Maybe it's that caffeine speaking out of me, but whatever it is. I like it. Walking to the tram, and what we're seeing is a pretty huge long line all the way back there. Something historical and cool up here. I would say like that. This one's for rookies. Let's do the real deal. A man has to climb his own mountain. I'm pumped for it, seriously. I would not cut my way short. This walk is amazing. So here we got a statue from 1958. And it was put here for the 100 year celebration of Hong Kong. What do we got here? King George. All right, guys, I'm not gonna play the tough guy. This walk has a huge incline. So it makes sense, you're going all the way up. We're almost there, sweating like crazy, already seeing all of Hong Kong. So there's many benches on the way. If you stop, it won't be that bad. But if you don't stop, we don't stop, it can get quite intense. But look at this. So I have literally emerged out of the jungle 
out of the trenches to find this. So there is a mall pretty much right here. Actually super modern here on the... <laughs> this is the gondola. All right, let's get a drink. Let's enjoy civilization for a second. Maybe some air conditioning, guys. It's February. It's like 20 degrees outside, but yo, you feel it. Seriously, this was one of the more intense hikes, so I don't know if I'm super out of shape. If you stop on the way, it will be easy. There's plenty of benches, but I just want to push myself a little bit, see how fast I can go. I think it took me like 20, maybe 25 minutes. But if you walk chill, it would be like 40. So this here is like a real pretty medium to large sized mall. We'll see if we can get a water somewhere and then find the best view in Hong Kong. That is the mission. I've already seen it a little bit. So there's a little terrace on the top as well. A little iced coffee. And look at that. This is the rooftop of the mall actually right now, so not pretty busy as you can see, but the view is absolutely epic. So seeing the hotel from here, seeing pretty much every main building, tallest tower of Hong Kong, this one right there, it's Kowloon, behind it, mainland China. So guys, this is a little bit as a reality check for you. The sickest views sometimes are a bit busy. But I would say, as always, usually there is something slightly outside of the main spot and I think I'm getting an idea where to go. Because here is getting real freaking busy. So we walked into this little road and 10-15 minutes later it brings us to a pretty quiet area overall. The view here I would say is even better in many ways. Just much more chill, not that many people make it out here. And let's say like that, one of the most massive city views, massive cities. Like it's crazy to think it's an island. If you look in some direction, it almost looks like Thailand a little bit. But yeah, some of the tallest buildings in the world, the highest skyscraper density in the world actually out here. So nowhere else, if you would kind of like topple up all the buildings together, it would be as many as in Hong Kong. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's little multifaceted video. Generally, Hong Kong, I think, is a very interesting place. It has been around for a very long time. And always it has been, uh, especially back in the day, a place to come down to, to start a life, to build a life for yourself. I mean, obviously the whole banking industry here, a lot of people still, let's say, in terms of nomadic living, living remotely. I know some guys who are running their, um, you know, different drop shippings, product exports, a lot of it goes through Hong Kong in many ways, or like the connecting Shenzhen, Guangzhou around here. So always been very very curious about and just being up here kind of like allows me to put everything into perspective in the sense of like how the city is structured like it almost like makes me a little bit anxious when i don't fully understand the city structure i wouldn't say fully now but we get a good idea so just looking at it hong kong island is all of that going back there where you saw kind of like the islands as well this is kowloon where we wandered around before we stayed like somewhere around there behind this cool tower so this is the second tallest tower in hong kong this is the tallest even though it doesn't look like it i think over 500 meters overall and uh, yeah i think i'm gonna be heading back actually i saw there was a road here as well so you can get a taxi get a bus so it's actually quite easy to get here of course you can get the tram as well but like i just fucking spy standing in lines personally i don't know getting a bit too comfortable i guess or i don't know what it is because it's actually the most fancy expensive way to get up here but yeah and well, I would say on that note, if you are new here by any chance, here on this channel I talk about building a life of freedom around the world, basically on God of World to see, I just 
document my day-to-day -day life in the past let's say year or two also a big focus on unique and hopefully also whenever it works out iconic uh, hotels accommodations resorts little airbnbs this just really became also like a little passion side of the whole channel so today's place you have seen also a truly unique concept as always all the details are down below and uh, yeah, if you want to see where I am right now, join me on Instagram. Usually the videos come out a couple of videos later. But yeah, if you're one of the OGs, if you have been watching, we always finish off the video in the same way with the premise of yeah, building a life of freedom. More opportunity, more adventure, and more freedom. Got a world to see.